Alright guys, we're going to learn some new shit today. This is going to be a pretty good video, I think. Um, just a little selfless plug. Uh, before we get started, if you haven't already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, as uh, other YouTubers say. I don't really care what you do to it, verb-wise. Um, I just care that you are subscribed. So, yeah, whatever. Uh, today we're going to look at how to generate some passwords. And uh, we're referring back to our old practicepython.org. We're looking at exercise 16 if you want to follow along. And if you want, actually, I would recommend just pausing it, doing this on your own, because it actually had me thinking pretty hard, a lot harder than normal. I think hard to begin with because uh, my brain doesn't function correctly half the time, but um, <laughs> uh, anyway, I don't think I'm giving myself enough credit, but this really had me thinking. I, I got halfway through making this video, and I was like, well, damn, what do I do now? I really don't know. I had it all figured out in my head, right? I figured out how I was going to do this, but actually code it, I did not know. So what I would recommend is just pausing this, if you haven't already, because I told you to pause it like a minute ago before I started babbling, and try to figure out how to do this on your own, and maybe code it up. What's cool about this is I think there's many different ways to generate different unique and interesting passwords. And by the requirements were given. My dog's chewing a bone in the background, so if you hear something... Whoops, I'm dropping my my headset. If you hear something, that's probably it. It's not someone getting axed to death or something. Uh, so we're going to be creative with how we generate passwords. Strong passwords have a mix of lowercase letters, uppercase letters, numbers and symbols. These two things right here actually were part of what tripped me up. And I'll show you my workaround for that. Just keep this in mind. Um, so, yeah. Well, let's go ahead and get into it. Um, there's a few things I want to show you, and one is that lowercase uh, letters and uppercase letters, how I plan to do that. So let me show you something cool I found. I did a lot of researching before starting this video, and a lot of playing around. So I think I have it, I wouldn't say perfected, but I think I got it in the right track. So what we're going to do is we're going to import the string module. And by the way, everything I use in this video, you don't have to download any packages. So keep that in mind. So we're going to import string. Okay, and string has this cool uh, little function I didn't know about. It says ASCII lowercase and uppercase. And all that really is, is it just gives you all of the uppercase alphabetic letters. Right? It zooms out every time I run this stupid thing. And then if I do ASCII lowercase, does the same thing. And I'm assuming, I actually never tried it. Uh, actually, I'm, I don't know what to assume. What does this do? Oh, that's interesting. It does both uppercase and lowercase. Oh. Okay, that is really interesting. Um, okay, so that might actually be used to our advantage. I don't know. We'll see. Um, Let's show you another thing. So another thing we're going to import, I'm only going to use two packages, I believe, and it's random. Okay, so we're going to import that. And uh, there's a, a function I learned about called choice, and really you pass in a group of something and it picks one at random. So if I wanted to, I could do string.ascii uppercase, and it would pick A, and if I ran that again, We'd pick a different one, N, N, L, whoops, and so on and so forth. Now if we did, can I do this in here? Dot ASCII lowercase, uh, it does the same thing. Pretty neat. So we're gonna use that to our advantage. What I'm gonna end up doing is actually creating a few different functions. We're gonna use those functions to generate passwords. I drank some coffee, actually I'm, I'm drinking coffee. Uh, it's not past tense, it's present. I hope you got it too, because this might be a longer video, but I think it's going to be rewarding for you guys to stick around and watch it, and hopefully you learn something. So, we're going to import random, and then, whoops, let me minimize this. And then we're going to import uh, string. So those are the two um, modules that we need, and right now I'm just going to create definitions, and I'm going to say get lowercase. So that's going to be one definition. And in this, we're just going to return uh, string, what I did earlier, string.choice, 
not string dot choice. I'm sorry, it's random dot choice, and then we're going to do string dot ASCII lowercase. So pretty much all this is going to do is it's going to return a random lowercase letter. And let's go ahead and get upper uppercase. Return random dot choice and string dot ASCII uppercase. I'll just do this. This bothers me. So I gotta make it even. <laughs> uh, so we have that. And another thing we have to worry about are the symbols and numbers. So what I can actually do is I can just store all of them. Uh, well, the symbols I can store in a list, and then for the numbers I can just do random dot, uh, was it something int? Is it, we'll get to there. Let's do the symbols first. Get symbol. Oops. So here I'm just going to create a list uh, of symbols. So let's call this variable sims, and here I'm just going to put in different symbols, probably only five or so. Um, some of these might actually not be valid. So if you want this to be legit, not for the dollar sign, if you want these to be legit, maybe you should look up what most actually take, what kind of symbols, and period. I think a period is allowed. Uh, dollar sign and add, I'm not sure. Ampersand, I'm not sure. Um, so we have sims, and then we can return uh, random dot cheese dot choice uh, sims. Okay, so last one we need to do get num. And we can do random dot random, that's it. And here we just have a start and stop. So one, two, let's do 20. So just to make sure all of these work, let's print out each of these. So print get lowercase, um, print get uppercase, print get symbols, or symbol, and print get num. Why is this giving me, oh, uh, I didn't return anything here. That shouldn't be why this is squiggly, but what's the problem here? Expect it to be like lines, okay, no one cares. Let's go ahead and run that, and there we go. We get a random lowercase, we get a random uppercase, we get a random symbol and a random number. Let's try that again. Cool, okay, so the next part is where I kind of got tripped up, because I got this far. And then my problem turned out to be, how do I randomly call these different functions? <laughs> I had no idea. Um, because if we want to make a completely random different password, we don't want it to start with a lowercase, then the next character is an uppercase, and the next character is a symbol, and so we want different amounts of each, right? We don't want it to always be consistent in that way. Uh, so what I actually found that you can do is let's create a list called defs. And here we can just put the name of each function. Now the thing you got to remember is you can't put in the parentheses. And I'll show you why. Uh, and I'll show you that it works this way. Uh, I thought maybe I could store them with the parentheses and that's how I initially started. But then I did some googling and this seems to be the way to do it. So let's get symbol and get num. And of course, IntelliSense is going to want you to put in the get num, not net, get num. It's going to want you to put in the parentheses, but you don't actually want to do that. Let's type in word defs. Why is this <laughs> grammarly all of a sudden? Okay, so what we can do is we can do defs uh, index 0, which would be the first one, and then we do the parentheses. So let's try that just to make sure it works. And... It did not, or did it? Oh, it did, it didn't. Be, well, it did work. It just didn't print it out. I just assumed it would print, and that was stupid of me. There we go. So if we did index one, uh, it'll do an uppercase, and then I think you can guys can believe me uh, when it comes to the next ones. Okay, so we have all of that. We have our definitions, and let's go ahead and think about how long we want this password to be. For me, I was thinking 8 to 12 characters, but really, uh, I think 8 to, maybe it should be, not 8 to something, maybe it should be a little bigger. 
maybe 10 to 15 or 12 to 15. I don't know. If you're doing this on your own, of course, you can do it however you want. Um, so let's do for, let's just make one for now and we can, we can mess around if we want. For, <coughs> excuse me, let me get another drink. Wow, that's hot. Okay. So for, let's just make X, it doesn't really matter. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't really care. I probably should name it something better, but you can do whatever you want. For X and Rand Dumb Dot Rand. Does this work? Rand range. Uh, start. So how big do we want it? We want it, let's say, let's do 8 to 12. I wonder if this works. I didn't actually try this. It does not. Okay. So it looks like we might range of 8. So this should work, correct? Yes. So what we might want to do is create another variable called length and that's called or that's going to be random.randint and it's going to be 8 to 12. Um, and then we can just pass in length here. So let's see if that works. It does. And it looks like it's different sizes. Okay, great. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want. Okay, so we have a random length. And of course, like I said, if you're following along and you're doing it exactly like I am, you can change these parameters to whatever length you feel is best. Uh, and let's do password, which is just going to equal an empty list. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to do password.append. And we're just going to pick, oh, how are we going to do this? So first we need a random uh, random index from 0 to 3. So let's do index is equal to random dot. I feel like rand int is our new friend here. So it's going to be 0 to 3. Right? And we are going to append uh, and then call one of these functions in defs. So our index is going to call one of these four functions. And then we're going to append that into our password list. Hope this isn't too confusing for you guys, but uh, if it is, I recommend replaying this maybe. And hopefully you'll pick it up. Whoops, it's not def, it's defs. Okay, so we have this, so let's then, let's exit this function or not function for loop and let's go ahead and print out password and see what that looks like. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. So does it have everything? It has lowercase, has a number, has a symbol, and it has uppercase. That's beautiful. That is freaking awesome. And the size changes, as you can see. No symbols in that one. Oh yeah, it does. It has a period. That is really cool. That is really cool. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like geeking out over here. That's that's actually really neat. Okay, so finished password is going to be equal to. Uh, we're going to pass in a an empty string dot join. And I think that's this is how it works. Password. Okay, and then we can print out this finished password. Let's see if this works does not what did I do wrong maybe it's maybe it's that whoops maybe it's that no okay let me search this real quick I know I'm doing something I'm, I'm close I'm on to something uh, let's see join a list you know I'm just gonna show you guys cuz when if you get to coding uh, professionally or you know in your spare time it's S dot join list S. What does that mean? Joins elements by and. Okay, so why doesn't? That's what I did. So they have a list. Am I missing something? 
Join. And then password is a list, correct? Yeah. I don't understand. <clears throat> I really don't. <laughs> it's probably something really silly. Expected string instance int found. Oh, so maybe. Oh, so they want each thing to be a string. Gotcha. Okay, so we're going to have to change this a little bit. So we're going to actually turn everything into a string. I'm pretty sure everything but number <coughs> is already a string. So let's try that. See if that helps. Nice. Okay, so that was the problem. Uh, it wanted everything in the list to be a string, but the numbers obviously were not. It was an integer. So we just returned a string and casted this to a string. Beautiful. See? Googling works. Not really. I just had to actually read the <laughs> read the error message, and I didn't. Um, so yeah, this is how I would make a password. Let's go ahead and change this. Let's change this to... 15 and then 20. That's really cool. There's a password for you. You guys want a password? Here you are. Use this one. I recommend it. I feel like it's a very strong password, actually. That's super strong. That's really cool. Anyway, guys, this is how I would create a random password. Um, and uh, I'm not ashamed to show you me, me Googling. Because every programmer does it, believe it or not. You know, some people make videos, uh, I do myself, where I don't Google anything because I researched ahead of time. But when you're in the field or if you're doing something on your own, of course, you're not going to be able to Google everything ahead of time because you won't know what you'll, you'll come against. Um, so, yeah, don't be ashamed by any means. The Internet's there to help you. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. This was a cool video. I really enjoyed making this. This was a fun problem. I got to give props to uh, our friends at practicepython.org. I don't know how many there are total, but we're at 16 already, and I hope to get through all the interesting ones. So thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate, appreciate you, and hopefully you've stuck around this long. And um, I'll see you in the next video.